Okay, here's an HW101, my first uh, transceiver, sideband transceiver that is. And this one has been modified with an RIT circuit that actually works pretty well. So, we're on 40 meters here. And, uh, well, let me show you the innards. This one had a couple of problems. Zoom out a little bit. Um, they had a couple of tubes that were actually the wrong tubes. Petrodyne oscillator and the Vox amplifier tube were uh, 12 AU7s instead of 12 AT7s. But any, and uh, you know, the uh, RIT mod is most of it's inside the VFO compartment here. But uh, cleaned it up and uh, it's working pretty good. Okay. Okay, here's the underside. And this is the one I did the uh, BFO modification or the CW carrier oscillator shift deal. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's the NPO 50 picofarad uh, trim cap. I cut the trace of the crystal and put this uh, in series with the crystal. And that allowed me to shift the transmit CW carrier oscillator by about 300 hertz or so. Anyway, that's what that looks like. And while we're still on the underside of the chassis here, this one also had a uh, bad CW filter. So I put one in uh, that uh, I had kicking around here from Allen. And this one is a much better match. The original filter here uh, had uh, had pretty high insertion marks, and it was off frequency. And that's all part of the game. But anyway, there's the parts that I ended up replacing. CW filter here, two tubes, heterodyne oscillator and Vox amplifier, that were uh, not the right tube. <laughs> um, a resistor. The Jackson drive was uh, bad. Carrier oscillator, 200 ohm carrier o or carrier null control, and it was actually missing a 6EA8 too. So that's the uh, parts count. Okay, back on 40 meters here, sideband of course. Let me show you this uh, RIT deal here. It's pretty cool. So the switch turns it on and off, obviously. There's a center position, more or less. I haven't measured it, but I guess it's probably about two and a half kilohertz. Pretty cool. And I did a test on this uh, on the air with a, uh, with a couple of guys on 75 meters. And when I turn the RIT on and transmit back to them, I, they, they report no frequency shift at all, very stable. So that's one modification that really seems to work. Okay, let me get it set up for a little CW here. Hang on. Okay, we're down on 40 CW in the middle of the afternoon and uh, not many signals on, unfortunately. And no real strong ones. Here's, an, here's a remaining issue with this rig. Um, well, it didn't do it there. Occasionally you get a little wobble when you're trying to tune in a CW signal. Um, the original Jackson drive was horrible. Um, 
and this one is a lot, a, a whole bunch better, but I still detect every once in a while a little shakiness as you're tuning. Once you stop tuning and leave the dial where you set it, it's, it won't drift. It's perfectly stable. Let me see if I can, well, I, you know what? I bet I can do it on the calibrator. Hang on here. Listen for the calibrator. See? There's a lot of play still in this drive. So it requires a little bit more careful tuning than usual, but, you know, it's a 40-year-old rip. Um, okay, stand by. Okay, here we got a guy, uh, and uh, this has the CW filter in it, of course. A little bit of a high pitch to it there. See, I'm turning that dial and it's hardly moving. There we go. Watch the S meter. A little bit of QSB going on. Really should, you know, check that out with a signal generator. But anyway, works good on CW. Let's uh, plug in a dummy load here for a second. All right, got a dummy load on this thing now and uh, just tuned up on 40 meters. And we'll go into tune here. That's a 100 watt full scale meter. And as I advance the mic CW gain control, we make 100 watts plus easy. And it's like that on all the bands except for um, 95 watts on 15 and 70 watts on 10. So that's the scoop on that. Let me just touch it up here a second. Um, back this off and show you the plate current meter. I was going to say, I don't know who W7 GTM is, but that's not true because I assume it's the guy with the name, or maybe a girl, Pat Milligan. Anyway, I guess um, this was his or her radio. Anyway, uh, let's look at play current here, go into tune, and we'll dip. We're at the dip right there, 100 watts out plus. And as I turn the gain back down to the 50 milliamp idling current, everything is cool. And the transmitter seems very stable. So that's it. HW101 brings back some memories. This RIT circuit certainly works great. I'm very impressed. If I would have had this on mine, I probably would have kept it an extra couple of years. But cleaned it up inside, replaced some parts, usual stuff. But uh, anyway, it's been a gas. <laughs> Keep on tinkering, everybody. Purple Orange.